Today, we take a look at the all-new ChatGPT 4.5, the latest model from OpenAI, the long-awaited new AI-powered Google Search, the new Microsoft Healthcare Assistant, and, of course, the long-overdue Amazon Alexa Plus. Let's dive in. ChatGPT just got an upgrade. Yay! A few weeks ago, OpenAI released ChatGPT 4.5 exclusively for pro users, but now it's rolling out to Plus users so I finally got to test it. And the big question is, does it live up to the hype? Well, not really, but let's take a look. So I tested GPT-4.5 in six different categories from practical advice to emotional intelligence and compare it to GPT-4.0. My takeaway is that it is just slightly more refined and it feels a little bit more like a human. For example, when I ask it, how should I plan a trip to Japan with my elderly parents? GPT-4.0 wrote, planning a trip to Japan with elderly parents who have mobility issues requires some extra consideration to ensure their comfort and convenience. Here are key factors to keep in mind and blah, 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 blah. Now, GPT-4.5 wrote, that's wonderful. Traveling to Japan with elderly parents who have mobility issues requires some thoughtful planning. Here are key considerations to ensure your trip is comfortable and enjoyable for everyone. Do you see what I mean? It feels more like a friendly human. It is just slightly different. Or look at this answer. When I ask for tips to have a productive conversation with someone that constantly interrupts me, the suggestions from 4.0 were good, but a bit confusing because I didn't know exactly when to deal with the situation. Whereas 4.5 suggestions were more to the point and a little bit clearer. I mean, you can also ask the models follow-up questions if something is not clear. It is not like this is some game changer or anything. But do I like it? Kinda. Is it worth paying 200 a month? Not really. Unless your work depends on a more human-like interaction. Just keep in mind the API pricing is way higher than GPT-4.0. So if you're building applications that rely on AI-driven conversations, this could be an important factor. But how about you guys? Are you using it already? Do you like it? Let me know in the comments. I've been wondering how long before Google changes its search engine. Because to be honest, I haven't used Google much lately. Since ChatGPT and Perplexity AI launched their search tools, I ask my questions, get an AI-generated answer, check the sources, and that's it. No more wading through the blue links and probably I'm not the only one. But it's finally happening. Google has launched AI mode for search, unfortunately only for Google One users, and it looks Awesome. For example, you can ask, what are the differences between smart ring, smartwatch, and tracking mats? And it will give you a well-structured table of results. And this looks so good. And you can, of course, continue the conversation. And because it is powered by Gemini 2.0, it is quite powerful. It can also handle complex questions like, what's the best time to schedule an outdoor engagement photo shoot? And you get information not only about the weather, but also crowds and permits, which is really impressive. And you can see that Google's user experience expertise is playing a big role here. The look and feel is just so familiar. Maybe they didn't want to force it until they got it right, just like Apple innovations. I just hope they roll it out to everyone soon. And one last thought. What do you think is going to happen to CEO and all the stuff we have been doing for the last years? Let me know in the comments. There is a huge challenge in healthcare that many people actually don't know about. And it is that doctors spend a massive amount of time on paperwork. And that's time not spent with patients. But that's what Microsoft Dragon Copilot is aiming to solve. And it works by combining voice dictation from Dragon Medical One with some AI magic to create the perfect assistant for doctors and clinical staff. And let me put it this way. You go to the doctor, you describe your symptoms and discuss possible causes with your doctor, business as usual. But now the system will be listening in the background, extracting the most important parts and writing the referral letter for the doctor to review later. And that alone saves hours of administrative work. It's launching in the US first, then coming to Canada, the UK, Germany, France, and the Netherlands. And I really hope hospitals adopt this quickly because freeing doctors from paperwork means better healthcare for all of us. If there is one product that's been long overdue for an overhaul using generative AI, it's Amazon Alexa. And it's finally happening. And Amazon has introduced Alexa Plus. 
and it looks amazing. It is actually pretty similar to OpenAI's operator or Gemini on Android phones. It can actually book a table at your favorite restaurant. It can order an Uber for you, play music from Spotify, and of course, hit the kitchen timer. And in my opinion, this is a big deal because so many people already have Alexa in their homes. And if you have Amazon Prime, this upgrade is completely free. But if you don't, you will have to pay 20 per month, which is a great deal compared to the $200 per month for OpenAI's operator. The rollout starts in just a few days, beginning with newer Echo Show devices in the US, with plans to expand to other regions and more devices later this year. We will have to wait a little bit to see if it works as promised, but it's exciting to see how Amazon is handling this because honestly, merging generative AI with real world devices it's not easy. We've seen how difficult this has been for other tech giants. Do you have an Alexa? Are you looking forward to it? Let me know. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe. See you in the next one.